Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is October the 22nd, 2020. Let's talk money, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say a couple of things. If you're someone who invests in stocks as well as crypto, there is an excellent way to track your holdings in one portfolio online where you can just grab a tablet, pull up your portfolio, and there among your stock holdings in alphabetical order are crypto holdings. And I'm talking about holdings that you can't monitor using Robinhood, right? The app is SeekingAlpha.com. It's an excellent site. You have some hardcore people into serious finance on that site that you could follow. And the portfolio feature, here's what it looks like. The portfolio feature literally allows you to follow not just the Robinhood cryptos like Ethereum and uh, Bitcoin, but off-brand serious cryptos like Horizon, like Pivx, right? Uh, like Mana, uh, Decentralance crypto. Uh, you can follow them all together. Um, I think it's really important when you have equities or crypto that you have an easy way to follow them given the volatility of the crypto market especially you want to check on your holdings several times a week if not a day right this is a great way to do that now let me just say this longtime subscribers know I'm a big believer in dash but understand dash has a problem right dash is too far ahead of the crowd Back in the day, Dash debuted the Masternode concept, something that other coins have ripped off, quite frankly, right? It's very important. Dash was on the forefront of staking coins, giving you a profit. And when Dash debuted the Masternode system, the price of the stock, excuse me, the crypto stayed flat. <laughs> this would be like Apple dropping the smartphone early on and it being too far ahead of the crowd. Well, understand, Dash is still way ahead of the crowd. The stuff Dash is doing right now is simply mind-blowing. I would encourage you to look at the recent series of videos that are here on YouTube that Amanda Johnson, who's big in Dash, did, right? Understand, Dash has people making interviews who are huge in the Dash food chain, right? Amanda Johnson, huge in the Dash food chain. She made some videos talking about Dash's recent innovations. And understand, Dash, in terms of governance, has a huge jump on about 95% of the cryptos out there, right? So Dash has done things that will enable developers to become part easily of the Dash ecosystem, right? Dash now has an agreement with Stakehound that's gonna allow Dash to participate in the DeFi world, if that's your thing, right? Now I think Dash is a stellar long-term investment, but I wanna be clear here. If I had one investment to make in the crypto space, it would be Bitcoin, right? Just understand what's happening in Bitcoin right now. <clears throat> um, in my last video I, on crypto, I talked about how I feel <clears throat> that a lot of S&P 500 companies, a lot of publicly traded companies, right, could be Russell 2000, are going to start to use Bitcoin reserves because they sense that it's not going to end well for the U.S. dollar, 
right? They sense that there's now an international market for Bitcoin, right? So, of course, since I made that video, you've had PayPal and Venmo now saying, hey, we're going to imitate Square and we're going to start allowing you to buy Bitcoin. Folks, that's groundbreaking. That's groundbreaking. What you're going to have next is going to be a copy of what's already happening in the precious metals market with gold. Right there you have people who have never bought gold before. Sam Zell, billionaire. I'm talking about wealthy people. Strong hands. People with assets. Right? Now you have folks like Sam Zell getting into gold. Well, in the corporate space, you're going to start to have people in the boardroom saying, hey, don't we need to diversify into Bitcoin to reduce risk? In other words, there's going to be so much risk involved in carrying a fiat currency like the dollar that some shrewd investors are going to start to say, hey, wait a moment. Isn't our company at risk by not having sound currency, by not having Bitcoin? Right? So don't get me wrong. Dash is much more innovative than Bitcoin. Dash is ahead of the crowd. Dash also has the scarcity of Bitcoin. Something, by the way, that Ethereum doesn't have. Right? Doesn't have. But... Bitcoin is so much farther along in terms of public awareness, public acceptance, its hash rate, its name recognition, that if I had to buy one coin, it would be Bitcoin. Understand, Square, for example, allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin. It doesn't have the other coins, right? PayPal, Venmo, they're keeping it simple. They're going to allow you to buy and sell Bitcoin. It's that infrastructure that's exploding right now. MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor, they bought over $400 million worth of Bitcoin, not the other coins. Right, many people are having a hard time with the concept of cryptocurrency. But they understand the bellwether in the space is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is king because of its scarcity. Because you know only so much Bitcoin will ever be mined. Right, you take away the scarcity you're taking away the foundation. Then you have nothing more than a fiat currency. Right? So let's be 100% clear here. Central banks around the world, sovereign nations around the world are playing catch up. Now they're trying to sell you on a digital currency. Folks, their digital currency is as flimsy as the dollar is, as the one is. If politicians can get together and can say silly things like, let's issue a stimulus. Let's have a stimulus plan. If you're in that nonsensical world where the central bank can suddenly decide to be inflationary, where politicians can get together Pelosi, Trump, and say, oh, how much money are we going to print to throw out into the economy to get people excited with this election right around the corner? Not realizing that the money they're printing is your money. It's your debt. You're going to have to pay back that debt. Right? That's the kind of setup that Bitcoin doesn't allow.
the government can't print Bitcoin. Understand, decentralized cryptocurrency with scarcity is miles ahead of any state-issued digital currency. Well, let's talk about an opportunity here involving a cryptocurrency that's simply mind-blowing. That cryptocurrency is a relatively new cryptocurrency called Polkadot. Now, let me be clear here. This is not for the squeamish. You have to already be a speculator, right? We'll use that word to describe investment gamblers. Right? Quite frankly, I think it's all a gamble, but for those of you who somehow believe that there's some safe harbor in the investment world that doesn't carry risk, right? The nifty 50, as they used to call it back in the day, where, oh, these stocks will never crater, and of course, many of them have. If you believe that there's some safe harbor that doesn't carry risk, you're one of these people who believes that the bond market is properly priced right now. Right? If you're willing to get negative yielding sovereign debt, if you're one of those people, okay, fine. We'll separate out investors based on a total fiction that some are speculators versus normal investors. Right? I believe Nassim Taleb understands that you have fat tails. You have tail risks all over the place. That these safe companies like WorldCom, Enron, might not be so safe. Right? Well, if you're a speculator in crypto, Polkadot has such a huge profit potential. Understand, Polkadot allows different blockchains to talk to each other. Folks, in this world where you now have challengers to Ethereum, Polkadot can coexist with Ethereum, right? But you have challengers to Ethereum, right? Cardano, folks, is developing. It's up today, right? Cosmos is developing. I think Ethereum's hold on this DeFi world will start to slip shortly. Well, just to understand, the next wave is here now. I want people to look at Polkadot carefully. Well, did you know that you can actually stake Polkadot? Not only that, did you know that Polkadot is available in the United States from a highly regulated exchange that actually qualifies as a crypto bank? Kraken. If you believe in Polkadot, folks, on a credible regulated exchange right now, Kraken, you can buy Polkadot, but more importantly for our purposes, and understand Polkadot as I make this video, is below $4.50 a coin. Right? Once you're on Kraken, you're going to see a button next to the Polkadot entry. And that button is going to read stake. Folks, you could go to Kraken, you could buy five polka dot for less than $25 right now. You can hit the staking button. This means you're going to hold on to it for a period of time. And Kraken will then take you through the staking process. It's extremely easy. So then in a few days, you can revisit Kraken. Again, a credible, regulated exchange here in the United States. Right? We're not talking about some dodgy exchange, Mt. Gox, where, you know, your coins are there and, oh, they might disappear. No, we're talking about an exchange that's been around for a while, that's regulated in America. Right, folks, if you then visit Kraken in a few days, 
right? Not next month or what have you. No, a few days. You will actually see that you have earned interest on your polka dot stake. If you do the math, you'll find out that that interest is around 12%. Now, understand the money you get from staking, right? It's not just the 12%, and understand, that number is really dependent on the value of the crypto, right? Sure, your the amount of polka dot you have increases by 12%. But if you believe, like I do, that polka dot right here is undervalued, that this is an asymmetrical bet, just like Cardano is, and I mentioned Cardano in an earlier video, then understand, not only is the polka dot you have increasing by 12% every year, in other words, you know, I buy 10, and then at the end of the year, I'll have 11.2 polka dot. But the value of the currency itself could increase 3x, 4x, 5x, 10x. Right? Understand, Ethereum is vulnerable. People are sitting around waiting for Ethereum 2.0. Well, the developers haven't stopped developing. Right? Some of the new cryptos, newer cryptos, Chainlink, Band Protocol, that allow information to be shared on multiple platforms, Polkadot that allows blockchains to talk and interact with each other. Folks, they're all here now. So the fact that you can stake Polkadot on a regulated exchange is groundbreaking. Right? Now, don't get me wrong. I personally prefer to hold the coins myself in cold storage while I stake. But you have to learn to crawl before you can walk. If you're new to the staking game and you want an easy way to stake a cryptocurrency that's not widely available, that technologically has huge upside. In other words, you have the Bitcoin blockchain. When Bitcoin came out, it was groundbreaking. Imagine a coin that could have the different blockchains communicate with each other. That's Polkadot. Right? I encourage people interested in possibly the next big thing to give Polkadot a very long and hard look. Understand, the price has come down to where it is now. Now it's reinflating. Right? But wow. I get the feeling. It's October 2020 right now. I get the feeling that by March of next year, people are going to be looking at each other and they're going to say, my God, we could have had polka dot at a little over $4 a coin in mid-October, I could have been staking this bad boy. I could have had, at no cost to me, 4% on top of the coin's capital gains. Right? This is a moment in time, I believe this investment is an excellent speculation. For those of you into crypto, who know crypto, who are willing to get off the main road, right? Let's say you, you know about Bitcoin. You have some Bitcoin. You know about Ethereum. You know about some alternative cryptos. You have them. Then I think this coin, Polkadot, warrants your attention. Understand, it already has 
one of the largest market caps in all of crypto. Right? Let's go one step further, too. We're just talking about a coin and staking it. I'm not getting deeper into the DeFi cryptocurrency world talking about, you know, loans and stuff like that. We're not there. We're just talking about helping liquidity, right? These coins depend on having a source of the coins available to have transactions go through the system. Right? I'll agree. I myself am concerned with some parts of the DeFi world. But here, where you're not making a loan, where you're just staking the coin on a highly regulated crypto bank, that's what Kraken is. I think it's an opportunity that is at least worth investigation, right? I'm just telling you what I'm doing. I'm staking some polka dot right now on Kraken. Let's go further to, I mentioned Cosmos. Folks, you can stake Cosmos on Kraken. You could stake Cosmos in the United States on Binance.us. Understand, you can register for Binance.us. They're in compliance with U.S. law, right? You have to go through the Know Your Customer protocol. But here again, we're talking about a regulated exchange. Right? We're, we're not talking about, you know, some fly-by-night exchange that might be there tomorrow, might not be there tomorrow, might tell you they're going to exit, might not tell you they're going to exit. No, we're talking about regulated exchanges here. Kraken and Binance.us, crypto has grown up that much. Understand, it's been a little bit more than a decade since Bitcoin was founded. Let me also say this too about Bitcoin. And as I make this video, it just crossed over the $13,000 threshold, right? Let's back up a little bit. The true test of Bitcoin stability is the number of consecutive days that it's been at $10,000 or higher. That shows consolidation. Did you know that Bitcoin has never been at $10,000 a coin or higher this long, ever? This is not 2017. This isn't some meteoric rise that doesn't have the base behind it. Here, you've had the base build up slowly for some time. Now it's been above 10,000 for a long period of time, and now you're hearing that MicroStrategies is in hundreds of millions of dollars into Bitcoin. You're getting serious investors. Understand, when you hear that Square and Jack Dorsey are into Bitcoin, right? And understand, first they allowed you to trade Bitcoin on the platform. Then they went and invested $50 million into Bitcoin. Well, understand, Paul Singer is an investor in Square. This is a heavy-duty investor. I believe Paul Singer is a billionaire. Well, understand, this isn't Paul Singer's only holding. Square wouldn't be in Bitcoin if someone as powerful as Paul Singer objected. 
So what you have here is the realization by billionaires like Paul Singer that Bitcoin is a sound investment. What happens if Paul Singer has a huge investment in another company and there's discussion on Bitcoin and Singer remembers the money he made having a company invest in Bitcoin which by the way is what Square is doing right now right Square's made money on their Bitcoin investment MicroStrategy has made a boatload of money based on the current price of Bitcoin on their Bitcoin investment and understand because of scarcity the scarcity of Bitcoin is going to continue to get scarcer and scarcer. Right? In the long run, short term, you're going to have peaks and valleys. But in the long run, right, the stock to flow model suggests that Bitcoin is going to absolutely explode. As it explodes, current holders are going to be rewarded. Now, Bitcoin is not the only cryptocurrency that has scarcity, limited supply, right? We know the amount that's going to be mined. But understand, Bitcoin right now is the only cryptocurrency in this position, right? You don't have companies announcing that they've invested over $400 million dollars in Dash right now, even though I believe Dash will get there. Right, so Bitcoin is a huge opportunity. In my eyes, it's a bigger opportunity than the stocks I've mentioned here in some videos. Right, and let's make no mistake on my position, just a macro view from 30,000 feet up. In 20 years, I believe the dominant world economic powers will be India and China. Right? The demographics are what they are. Technology continues to get cheaper and cheaper. You have millions upon millions more people online in China than you do in the United States. You now have 5G and China is at the forefront of the 5G revolution. Understand the stuff President Trump's trying to do, some foolish trade war, my view, right? Some absolutely foolish trade war that's killing American farmers who sell soybeans and other products to China. That's like going to the beach with a spoon and trying to spoon out water and thinking you're making a difference on the water level right China will ultimately win out simply because technology is widespread you already have a Silicon Valley in China Shenzhen that's really surpassing Silicon Valley right now right China has been able to learn from the mistakes of the West Right? India, the biggest money imaginable, Amazon, for example, Facebook, right now is throwing hundreds of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars into the Indian retail market. Because India, of course, has hundreds of millions more people than the United States. Right? Understand the demographics, the technology. The capital inflows, those are what determine economic power. Well, let's look at Africa. Did you know that in terms of the percentage of people who have either used or who have owned Bitcoin is among the highest in the world in Nigeria? If you bring in widespread banking services, 
if people in Nigeria are able to hold their assets on a phone or a tablet if you have it set up where these banks that cater to the wealthy get disintermediated so that financial services are actually available to not just the wealthy but the poor the working class the middle class then you're looking at a huge economic explosion understand the demographics of Africa are such that the continent is younger chronologically than much of the rest of the world right the COVID rates in Africa were low compared to the rest of the world then of course demographers realized that the average age in some of these African countries of the people in the country are about 19 to 25 years old you're talking about a young group of people with access to unprecedented technology understand Bitcoin was just created a little over a decade ago that technology is new it did not exist 15 years ago well now it's in Africa they're using the technology understand how ridiculous governments are they will just flat out tell other countries we're sanctioning you we're cutting off your access to your own money why would you hold any wealth in that currency after the issuer sanctions you right with Bitcoin you get around that entire sovereign nation sanction paradigm right so just to sum up you have great things happening in crypto you always want to keep your eye on scarcity for me and I'm just telling you what I'm doing if I had only one crypto to buy even though I believe that Dash is more technologically advanced obviously I have Dash I have not you know uh, given up most of the Dash that I have um, I have other cryptos I even hold some Ethereum but if there was one crypto I had to buy it would be Bitcoin every time a Michael Saylor announces that his company has bought over 400 million dollars worth of Bitcoin the scarcity jumps the price level jumps if that continues happening and it will in my opinion the price of Bitcoin is going to go parabolic right it did in 2017 it didn't have anything remotely approaching the base that it has now you're in a period of time where Bitcoin has never been over ten thousand dollars a coin for as long as it has it's now dancing at thirteen thousand dollars a coin folks in my opinion this is still the top half of the first inning right if I had one coin to buy it would be Bitcoin if I'm gonna get experimental and buy a coin that I can stake on a highly regulated exchange Polkadot has my attention right now right understand in terms of interest you get more with Polkadot than you do with Cosmos right that would assume that both coins appreciate at the same rate right some parts of the DeFi market are too risky for me but I'm staking both Polkadot and Cosmos right now I'm more excited 
with polka dot then I am Cosmos of course Cosmos's signature coin chain link I have some of that as well that's how I see it as well as some other coins I haven't mentioned here anyway that's how I see it let me hear from you your input is at least as important as any video I make if you have information on crypto that you want to share with the public and every crypto video I make there are critics who will come out and say crypto is going to go to zero, right? If you're a Peter Schiff type and you believe that and you want to use this as a platform, feel free to do so in the comment section of this video. If you're an investor slash speculator and you want to talk about different cryptos, uh, the benefits, the weaknesses of an individual crypto or some opportunity that the public isn't focused on right now, and I feel polka dot is that kind of opportunity I feel dash has been that opportunity for years then I hope you leave that information in the comment section of this video thanks for stopping by